listen everybody to the words I have to say Better get ready this is Daniel White the third with the second coming watch update this is update number 552 uh, let's take a quick look at today's prophecy related headlines which point towards the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and the end of the world as we know it First, today, under the sign category of wars and rumors of wars, according to the AFP, the American commander of the war effort against ISIS said on Monday that U.S. allies are ready to send roughly 1,500 security personnel to Iraq to help the Baghdad government in its fight against jihadists. The move reflects a widening international campaign against the Islamic State group in Syria and Iraq. Follows Washington's decision to double its military footprint to 3,100 troops. Members of the U.S.-led coalition meeting last week made initial pledges that would bring close to 1,500 forces to Iraq to train and assist the country's army in addition to the Americans already mobilized. Second today under the sign category of distress among nations according to Bloomberg China is preparing to arm its uh, stealthiest submarines with nuclear missiles that could reach the U.S., cloaking its arsenal with the invisibility needed to retaliate in the event of an enemy strike. Fifty years after China carried out its first nuclear test, patrols by the almost impossible to detect JIN class submarines armed with nuclear ballistic missiles will give President Jinping greater agility to respond to an attack. The nuclear-powered subs will probably conduct initial patrols with the missiles by the end of this year, giving China its first credible sea-based nuclear deterrent. Third today under the sign category of wars and rumors of wars, According to CNN, outgoing U.S. Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel has said that the U.S. will keep a larger force in Afghanistan for the first few months of 2015 than it initially planned to. During a joint press conference with the Afghan president, Hagel said that up to 10,800 troops will remain in the country at the start of next year. A previous announcement had said there would be 1,000 fewer troops. Hagel arrived in Afghanistan in order to assess the nation as the United States begins the drawdown of its forces in the new year. Fourth today, under the sign category of distress among nations, according to Reuters, the European Union will press Turkey to cooperate more closely in the fight against the Islamic State or ISIS and urge it not to undermine European Union sanctions on Russia in a visit this week intended to give new impetus to often fraught EU-Turkish relations. EU Foreign Policy Chief Federica uh, Mogherini, as well as the uh, European Union's Enlargement Commissioner and Humanitarian Aid Commissioner, are visiting Turkey in one of the highest profile EU visits in years. Mogherini said in a statement that the visit is a strong indication 
of the strategic importance of the EU-Turkey relationship and our desire to step up engagement. Fifth today, under the sign category of wars and rumors of wars, according to the BBC, Russian President Vladimir Putin has said he hopes a permanent ceasefire will soon be agreed to in Ukraine. After talks in Moscow with French counterpart Francois Holland, Mr. Holland is the first Western leader to visit Russia since the start of the Ukraine crisis earlier this year. A ceasefire was signed in September, but there have been constant breaches. Putin said they had held detailed discussions on ending the violence in Ukraine. Ladies and gentlemen, you can read these stories in more detail and get more prophecy-related news at secondcomingherald.com. The prophetic passage of scripture we are looking at today is Exodus chapter 3 verse 12 which reads, And God said unto Moses, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee, that I have sent thee, when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt. Ye shall serve God upon this mountain. Allow me, ladies and gentlemen, to share with you some commentary on this passage from the popular Bible prophecy commentary edited by Tim LaHaye and Ed Heinsohn. Moses objects to his role in God's Exodus plan. He is all too aware that he is not the same man he was 40 years ago. No longer an Egyptian prince and now an obscure shepherd, he no longer possesses his former sense of divine destiny. His first of several objections to God is that he is personally unable to accomplish a task of this magnitude. God responds to Moses' first objection with the assurance of his abiding personal presence, which will empower Moses. Moses' ability to deliver Israel will be confirmed when he leads the Hebrews back to this very same mountain for the purpose of worship. The Israelites would not go directly from Egypt to the land of promise, but would first enjoy a roughly 150-mile detour to Mount Sinai. In response, Moses then raises his second objection, he reasons that arriving at Mount Sinai would indeed prove confirmation of his commission after the fact. But until that point, what would motivate the Hebrews to trust that Moses could actually deliver them? While he himself might be aware of God's personal abiding presence, how would the people be certain of Moses' divine commission? To this objection, God responds with the revelation of the essence and substance behind his personal name. He identifies himself as I am who I am. The personal name of the Lord is Yahweh, often presumed to be pronounced Yahweh, Yahweh, or Jehovah. The actual pronunciation of the Lord's personal name uh, is today a matter of uncertainty. The ancient Hebrew priesthood so guarded the ineffable name of God that with the passage of time following the destruction of the temple in AD 70, knowledge of its correct articulation was lost. The uncertainty stems from the lack of vowels in the basic construction of Hebrew words. Moses is to remind the people that this is the name by which God has always wished to be known and worshipped, the name that expresses his character 
as the God who both remembers his covenant and keeps his promises. Beloved, if the Lord tarries his coming and we live, we will continue looking at the prophetic passages of the Bible in our next broadcast slash podcast. Our second coming quote for today is from Charles Spurgeon. He said, The fact that Jesus Christ is to come again is not a reason for stargazing, but for working in the power of the Holy Ghost. If you are not ready for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, may I encourage you to get ready today by receiving him as your Savior. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Believe in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ right now that he died for your sins, was buried, and rose from the dead by the power of God for you, so that you can live forever with him. Pray and ask him to come into your heart to save your soul today, and he will. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Keep looking up, for your redemption draweth nigh. Let us join in the prayer of John the Revelator when he prayed, Even so come, Lord Jesus. God bless you.